What if I told you that a single image tag, just one line of HTML could hand over your entire session to an attacker? And no, this isn't just another XSS demo. Today, we're looking at how to combine OAuth flows with the clever abuse of browser behavior to trick our Chrome browser into handing over our session and enabling a full account takeover. Browsers are usually there to protect you. When you click from one website to another, don't hide and strip sensitive parts of the URL thanks to something called the referrer policy. But let me quickly tell you how it works. When you click on a link or load a resource like an image, the browser includes a referrer header, basically telling that destination or that web page where the request came from. It's like saying, hey, I'm coming from this specific page or website. It helps with things like analytics, tracking, and debugging. But since that header can also include full URLs, sometimes with sensitive information, the browser tries to be careful about what gets sent, especially across domains. So by default, they only send limited information when crossing origins. So if I'm going one to side to another, we want to make sure we don't leak something sensitive. But a security researcher recently found a weird trick. By injecting a linked header with a referrer policy set to unsafe URL, you can overwrite the browser's normal behavior and force it to leak everything, including the full URL with the query parameters. The unsafe URL value tells the browser send the entire URL no matter where the request is going. That includes a full path, query string, and any sensitive tokens that may be hiding in that URL. Compare that to the default setting, which only sends the origin to the third party side and never the query parameters. This is a big deal because the OAuth flows often send tokens and user data through those query parameters. And if you can steal that information, well, that is a game changer and it's game over. You can hijack someone's session and take over their account. Most developers don't think twice about query strings leaking through their images, especially not ones that are preloaded on their own applications. And that is what makes this technique so sneaky and yet so interesting. Let me show you why through a hands-on demo that I've created. You can access this for free on hackinghub.io. Just look for the Chrome Referral Leak Hub on there. It should be one of the first ones. Launch the hub follow along and I'm going to give you a challenge at the end. So typically when you send OAuth though, this is what it kind of looks like. You go in here, it's going to have your response type, your client ID, and the redirect where we want to be redirected after we log in. You can see we're on SSO and it's going to send us to this domain as soon as we're authenticated. As soon as you hit allow, it is going to authorize us to log in after we have provided the user and password. I know you typically when you do this on a real website, it is going to ask you for a username and password. We just took that step off just to make it easier. All you have to do is hit login. Don't provide any username. It's going to assume that you know the username and password and log you in. But this is what it kind of looks like. You just log in and you have this uh, authentication. You have completely authenticated to this website. But here's what it gets really interesting. Typically, when you are looking at an OAuth flow, some of the things that you try is messing with this redirect URI. And I'll show you why. When you change this URL, we're going to actually open up our Kaido and intercept this request. When you hit allow and you send this request, what's going to happen is it is going to append your code, your session code to this authentication URL. And that's how the application knows to authorize you. If this is a valid code and it matches your email address, it's going to log you in. So if I take this URL right here, as you can see, I'm going to log out and I'm not logged in anymore. You can see on the top right corner, if I paste this in, valid code means we can log in. Keep in mind that these codes are a one-time use. So if I log out really quickly right here and do this again, it's going to say, hey, this is an invalid code. When it comes down to looking at OAuth workflows, the key here is to leak that code. Maybe find an open redirect, find an XSS, do something where this code right here is getting leaked to a third-party website. And that's what makes this one that I believe very, very interesting. A couple of tricks that I usually try is trying to break the regex for what domain is allowed here. So for example, is it going to allow me to just add comnahomsec.com to this? So it changes the domain from ctfio.com to this. If I control this domain, then I can leak this entire OAuth token right here to a secondary domain that I control. So if I send this request, it's going to come back and say, nope, this is not valid. There are a couple of tricks you can do. You can do at nahomsec.com, see if that works. That doesn't work. In this case, we have made sure that the regex is locked down. So you can't do any tricks to bypass this regex and get it to redirect to somewhere else. Okay, so now that we understand how the entire OAuth workflow works, how do you typically hijack it? Let's take a look at this export. Just remember for a quick wrap up, all it needs to happen here is we want to point our OAuth flow to an untrusted domain. In this case, we can't do that. So we're going to abuse a trusted resource to still find a functionality or a vulnerability to still that token or the code that we're going after. So for this to work, we're going to need a couple of things. One is we're going to need our own web server. So I'm going to just use my 
domain right here. What I've done with my Nginx ruling is that no matter what path I give it or what folder I give it, it is always going to serve the same exact file. Let me show you what that file looks like. And this is our file that I have. So no matter what the endpoint is, no matter what route I go to, it's going to show the contents of index.php. In index.php, we're doing a couple of things. We're first doing two if statements. We're saying, hey, if the endpoint is img.png, I want you to serve an image that is a one by one PNG file, but except I want you to set a header, which is our export right here, that sets the referral policy to unsafe URL. This is where the magic happens. And I have a second photo about PNG. This one is just to show you what it would look like if we don't add this at all. So I'm going to start with this one and then we're going to show our export right away. And then no matter what happens, it's going to just write the contents and save the referral header to the log.txt. That's all it does. This is all I have here. And just to show you what it looks like, I have no other files. I don't know what this one is. We can just get rid of it, but we don't need anything here. You can see now I have no files in here, just as index.php that we're going to serve to our website. Now let's go back to our lab. And what we're going to take a look at now is how we can abuse this search functionality to have it just serve our image and exploit this vulnerability. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put our image source equals to hack with nahamsek. I'm going to do photo.png so you can see what it looks like. And now we have our file being shown here. You can't see it because it's a one pixel by one pixel. It's not going to show, but it is there. We can also look at the DOM right here just to make sure it's there. Can see that it's been injected into the page but now how can we use this to abuse this oauth flow and hijack things so what happens here is we're going to go to login since we know that this domain or this application trusts this entire subdomain right here this very site ctfio.auth we're just going to change this to something random maybe we can do auth dot dot slash q equals to test one two three where our exploit is i'm going to actually put this whole thing here i'm going to remove this and this is what we're sending it back to. We don't have to do the dot dot slash. You can just remove this and redirect it, but we're just going to use this and say, hey, I want you to go to this website instead. And if this is a trusted resource, it is going to just behave normally and go there, except it is going to attach the authorization code right here and not log us in because this only logs in if it goes to auth, gives us this code, and then we're logged into this application. But in this case, it's not doing that. And if I go into my log.txt, if there is a log, there isn't a log because this image doesn't have anything for us to log because by default, we're not getting the referral header. So now if I change this to image.png and go back to our original lab right here, I'm going to just change this queue to this. And now we're going to send the same request. We're going to allow it with image.png. This is the one that actually is the vulnerability with the exploit. We hit allow and we can see that their code is in here. Now we're going to go to our log.txt and we can see that this code right here exists and we're still not logged in and we're just going to grab this code and go to auth and provide it and you can see right off the bat we're able to take over this account this is really really interesting because you don't always have to just find a place where the html injection is in the url address bar you can find anywhere where it allows you to store an html injection point that image tag or put an image tag in there to point it to a web server rewrite the header with a link tag and then boom as soon as they log in and hit that page they're just going to take over their account this is really really interesting because typically somebody like me that's looking at these applications i'm always looking for a way to trick the oauth flow to redirect it to somewhere else and now with this i have other capabilities and hopefully in the near future chrome isn't fixing this so we have a couple of months to go across all the bug bounty programs and look for this all right that's it do me a favor if you haven't already hit that like button let me know if you like content like this this is something a little bit out of my normal realm i usually look for server side vulnerabilities i look for maybe some excesses here and there but looking at browser behavior isn't something that i do it's really out of my comfort zone but i love looking at this i know it's a very very niche vulnerability so if you like content like this you want me to do more of these drop me a comment down below let me know and i'll see you all in next week's video peace